What's up team? It is your biggest fan, The Real Casadero, and in this video we're talking about programming language is. What is a programming language? Like, like exactly, what is a programming language? I believe this knowledge, this knowledge is going to help a lot of people, a lot of people begin their journey into code because now they're going to have some understanding and hopefully this philosophy will make you think about computers and programming in a whole different way but where it doesn't seem so complex like you can't learn it like it's just impossible like you had to come from a certain background and be raised by a certain family and go to a certain school and you have to have these certain habits and all these things the only habits we need in order to in order to be successful whatever successful is to achieve the things that we want to achieve is we have to have perseverance and that, that's pretty that's pretty much it but anyway team let's get to it this is what programming is this is what programming languages are all right team so let's break this down super 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 duper simple super duper simple 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 we're not going to go through the whole history of computing but at some point we arrived in a place where we decided that in order to make computers do what we needed to do all we needed to do was control an electrical pulse voltage no voltage alive or dead and that created a one or zero in in, in computer code well in order to write a program like let's just think about th let's think about it this way let's think about it this way right the smallest possible piece of information that we can give to a computer is a bit a byte is composed of eight bits a character is composed of of, of bits and eight bits make a byte a character of one character like the letter A, B, C, D, E, F, G is one byte. So if we have a word, like a word that consists of five letters, that word could be five bytes. Now that word can get bigger because we can add metadata to it that tells that tells whatever programming language that we're using that, hey, this thing right here that we're gonna put in memory, this is a word, this thing right here that we're gonna use in this computation, this is a word or this is a number, or this is whatever. But that's what it all boils down to. Well, this meant that if we wanted to write one letter because one letter is eight bits which makes up a byte to write one letter we'd have to write a series of ones and zeros and depending on how we wrote that series would determine what letter it was well imagine if you wanted to write a word it would take you a long time because you got to do this math right to figure out these ones and zeros and if you wanted to write a sentence it got even worse if you want to write a whole book oh my gosh it got crazy now if you go into like mathematical calculations or special characters punctuations emojis all this stuff it gets like stupid complicated it just gets insane so at one point somebody said hey we can abstract all this stuff away right well if we we if we can come up with a language to keep us from writing these ones and zeros we'd be cool and that language is called machine code or machine 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 language machine code this is just a step up from binary all this stuff that i'm talking about here you can just go out and google it i'm not gonna like dig super deep into it in this particular video but by the end you're gonna understand exactly what the hell I'm talking about and you're gonna understand how to put programs together so let's carry on so we've got this machine code which is which is hex still complicated but now instead of writing you know eight ones and zeros maybe we just write you know two or three regular letters that we understand a O, a e and a what I don't know what that is in hex code but this would evaluate to something in binary which would evaluate to a letter or a number or whatever well, somebody said, hey, man, you know, that's kind of hard, right? This is this is difficult. I want to write a program. If, you know, this is way easier than writing ones and zeros, but it could be better. What if we could just talk to the computer like we would talk to a computer? Well, me and you know, just based on the, the format that we're using right now, this whole YouTube format, that sometimes people say things and they are misinterpreted. This is This is the whole source of the news today. People taking what other people say out of context and just making it all kinds of crazy. So if we tried to talk to computers like this, the same way I'm talking to you right now, it would not work. Computers are just not smart enough. One day they will be. I don't know what day that'll be. It could be tomorrow. Maybe they are already that smart, we just don't know. I'm sure Google and Microsoft and Amazon and Facebook, all these people are working on ways so we can just talk, I can just talk to a computer like I'm talking right now and the computer will go, okay, let's build something and, and do something. But as it stands right now, we are not quite there. And even, this is what's crazy, for us to even get there, we have to write a bunch of code and a bunch of software to do it. So the next best thing to, to being able to speak a regular language, but not having to write ones and zeros or hex code, just like this random, you know, series of in cryptographic 
craziness, we came over programming languages. Inside of the programming language, there's mechanisms to help us do this stuff, right? We can say, hey, put a quote here, type our word, put a quote here, and that makes it a string, and the computer knows it's a word, but not right away. So what happens is we take all of the thoughts in our head, all of the commands we want to give to a computer, and we write them down. In the olden days, people used to write this stuff on a piece of paper. Now, we just write it inside of the computer. The really good programmers, the really good coders, they still write this stuff on paper. It may not be written out exactly the way it's going to go into the computer, but they have some sort of flow, some sort of diagram that they're going to use that, that gives them a roadmap to follow while they're trying to translate this into a language that the computer can understand. So we go onto the computer, we open up a text document, we type everything in and we save it. Plain text document, nothing fancy about this. If you don't know what a plain text document is and you want to learn the code, just go to Google, type in plain text and you can learn all about plain text. I wouldn't go too deep, just know that it is the most basic document you can have. It has no special formatting or anything. What we put in a plain text document is what is read from the plain text document. So we write all of our source code in plain text. Now we may use an editor for this. The editor will add features like different colors and all kinds of stuff. But at the end of the day, it's just a text editor that adds some extra stuff. All of the text that we write in there is just plain text. It's just regular old, it's regular old text. That text document is then either fed into a piece of software or read by a piece of software. That piece of software is typically written in some other programming language. Most of the, most of the time it's written in C because C is a low level language. We can use it on most computers, but it's high enough for regular people to understand so we don't have to write binary. But before the compiler could exist, someone had to write the compiler using either binary or hexadecimal or machine code or whatever it is, right? So the compiler, the original compiler, was not written in the same way that we see now. So those people who wrote those compilers, they'd be like, yo, these people don't know nothing about programming. And that's just the way it just is just the way it is, right? Doesn't mean we're dumb or less smart or whatever. Just means that they've done the work for us because they love us and they care about us and they don't want us to struggle into the future. So we've got this program called the compiler and what it does is it reads our text. Our text file is just instructions to another piece of software and that piece of software sits on top of an operating system. That software talks to the operating system and the operating system talks to the hardware. It talks to the computer monitor and the printer, the fax machine, the headphone, it talks to all that stuff. We don't have to think about it. We, when we think, when we go to write a program, we'd have to go, man, I got to write some sound drivers so people can hear. I got to write some video drivers so people can see. I got to write some printer drivers so people can print. I got to write freaking, I got to write, I got to write, I got to write file control protocol so, so I can transfer this. We don't have to think about any of that stuff. It's built into the language. And all of this goes to a text document and it's read by an interpreter or compiler. Now, each language has constructs. And inside of those constructs, we're able to encapsulate blocks of instructions that say do this particular thing let's say for instance we want to print something to the screen in python we would write uh we would we would write print space quotation mark whatever whatever you hello world quotation mark and that would be that would be an, an actual program when we feed this to the python interpreter and i talked about compilers before this interpreter is just a Think of it as a compiler that, that does it on the fly, like wow, we talked about this in another video. So anyway, the Python interpreter reads this, reads these instructions, right? In this case, the instruction is print. When the interpreter reads this, it says, okay, hey, right, here's the word print. We want to print this thing. The default for, for printing stuff is putting it on the screen. The interpreter is going to call the operating system and say, hey, we need to put some stuff on the screen. The operating system may say, where do you want to put it? Maybe the maybe the interpreter already knows whatever. They're like, hey, we want to put this stuff on the screen inside of this window right here. The operating system goes, okay, cool. And it contacts the video card and whoever else it needs to do business with. Yo, take this information, put it on the screen. And then that thing puts it on the screen and it sends some other information back to us and says, yo, we wrote this on the screen. This is this is an error handling mechanism and beginning programmers, we don't see that typically too often because we haven't gotten to that point yet. Some people, some people never get to it, right? They'll be learning code for like 15 years and they'll like, they'll never even write an error handler. Like it, it's, it, it, it just is what it is. I'm not saying that like you shouldn't or you should, you should, you should understand all of this stuff if you want to go out and be a programmer, a software developer, a coder, all this stuff, 
You don't need to understand, like you don't have to master all of this stuff. There's no need to go out and get a degree and master all of this stuff. Just understand the very basics of it. Programs, programming languages, they're all just text documents that are being read by other programs. And those other programs are returning oftentimes information in that same format to be read by some other program or a human being. That is it, team. That is how programming languages work. If you have any questions, concerns, complaints, whatever, let me know. Leave a comment in the notes below because there's a bunch of people out there who are like, I can't do this because it's too hard. I can't do this because I don't know where to start. I can't do this because of 101 other reasons. It's not that complex. I'm not a smart guy, right? I barely made it out of high school. I was in the army for 14, 15 years and I spent my time flying around the world setting up computer ne not even not even complex computer networks like you people picture this stuff they think it's so comp it's not it's not right once you do something over and over again it just becomes inherent and you're like oh okay all right you know i can figure this thing out and then you just do and after you're doing it so long what seems complex to other people is very simple to you but i'm here to tell you it's not it's not that hard it's, it's it, it really isn't any Anyone can learn this stuff in their spare time. You don't need a course. You don't need any. All you need is a book and a computer and the willingness to learn and the commitment to act. All right, team. Hey, by the way, before we go, if you would like a hat like this or a shirt like this, check out rightcodedrinkcoffee.com where I have swag to keep you motivated and inspired along your journey to becoming the person you want to become so you can do the things you want to do and live the life you want to live. You can also check out the code 365 Startup Lab where I've got a bunch of free courses, introductory stuff on how to code. And as, it's, as, I, as it stands right now, while I'm speaking to you, I am putting together a course. It's not the end all be all of all programming courses, right? I cover the, the fundamentals of web development and how to think about building your thing from beginning to end, right? And most people, most people are never going, are going to go out and do this stuff. But the reason why I put it there is number one, so I can say I have it. And number two, if you want to support the channel, all you got to do is go over to Code365 Startup Lab, sign up for one of the paid courses, and boom, your money goes to support the channel, and I can keep producing that course. Or you can check out rightcodedrinkcoffee.com where you can get some swag and merch. So you get something, I get something. It's a win-win situation. All right, team, that is it. I'm your biggest fan, The Real Casadero. This one went a bit long. I'll try to edit it down as much as I can. But I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Share, subscribe, like, leave a thumbs up. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I upload new videos. And I will see you next time where we're talking about code, tech, spiritual. I don't know, man. It, does, it doesn't even... Just go out there and win. You can do this. I know you can. I did it. It's, it's hard, but not as hard as we think.